Ann Hansen, uh, an extension plant pathologist with Virginia Cooperative Extension. And we're out here today on the Virginia Tech campus looking at a turf disease called red thread. Um, this disease is pretty common in the springtime, and so it's not unusual to see it on May 9th. The disease affects a lot of different types of turf grass, so it can affect Kentucky bluegrass, perennial ryegrass, tall fescue. And what we have here is a mixture of grasses, and you see some of these uh, patches of pink straw-colored grass uh, appearing in the turf. They're usually between four to eight inches in diameter. You can get a number of these spots coalescing um, and forming a larger patch. And what's diagnostic about the red thread disease is these little um, pinkish or red threads that come out of the tips of the leaves. And these are structures of the fungus that causes this disease. And they're called sclerotia. And they can actually survive in the thatch layer when the grass gets cut and these fall down into the thatch layer and uh, can then reinfect the grass later. So we often see this disease showing up in the springtime and it's most common on nutrient poor turf. So usually by spring that fall application of nitrogen fertilizer has, has worn off and the grass is, is a little nitrogen uh, deficient and then the grass is more susceptible to this disease. And red thread also occurs at cooler temperatures, so we see it in the spring and in the fall. And under wet conditions, we can really clearly see those patches like we can today where we've had a, a little bit of rain overnight. Types of controls that you might use for this disease are basically cultural controls. You can supply a little extra nitrogen in the spring and that will help alleviate symptoms. And you also want to avoid overhead watering late in the day, in the, in the late afternoon. Uh, you don't want to prolong that dew period, uh, which will favor disease with a, a prolonged moisture period. The fungus that causes this disease mainly is infecting the leaf blades, and so you usually don't get whole plants dying back. You just get leaf blades dying back, and then under warmer, temperatures and higher nitrogen conditions, that grass will come back and green up. So it's mainly a cosmetic problem and, and not something to really worry about. Um, if you maintain your good nitrogen fertility um, in an, on an ongoing basis, then you can avoid this disease. Um, of course, you always want to base your nitrogen applications on a soil test. Um, because if you end up applying too much nitrogen, you can favor some other diseases of turf that, that also occur. There are some varieties of some of these turf grasses that are less susceptible to red thread than others. And to find out what some of the current, currently available varieties are, you can look at the National Turf Grass Evaluation Program website, and you can find some of those varieties that have performed better in their trials.